Good morning, I'm Praram Bhakaha. Let's begin with the main stories. Minister for Foreign Affairs, Naran Kazi Shrestha, who is in his China visit to hold talks with his counterpart, Wang Yi, today, to talk on topics including implementation of Belt and Road Initiative. Search operation continued to find one person missing after diving into the Karnali River from Chisavani Bridge. Police deployed resources at its disposal based on necessity. Resolution passed by UN Security Council means Israel is now under an obligation to stop its military campaign in Gaza for the next 15 days. Israel not to stop the war. Prime Minister Netanyahu cancels meetings with the US. And Team Nepal to play Ireland Wolves in the second match of the two-match 2020 series today. Hosts aiming for a whitewash, visitors look to level the series. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs Naren Kazi Shrestha, who is in his nine-day official visit of China, has been busy in political parties and is to hold talks with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi today. It has been learned that discussion is to be held regarding the implementation of the agreements reached during Prime Minister Pushakamal Dal's China visit. Talks are also to be held regarding collaborations between the two nations for implementation of the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, among others. Minister Shrestha is also slated to address an investment program to be organized by the Nepali Embassy. Having reached Beijing yesterday morning, Minister Shrestha held talks with CPPCC Chairperson Wang Huning and members of the Standing Committee of the Chinese Communist Party Political Bureau. Shrestha will also visit Chongqing, Tibet and Sichuan provinces and meet high-ranking Chinese officials and communist leaders. Search operation for a youth missing after diving from the Chisavani Bridge in Karnali has continued. 17 youth swam in the river after diving from the bridge yesterday. Of them, 30-year-old Lokendra Shahi of Lamki Chuha Municipality, Ward No. 3 Chisavani, Kailali, has gone missing. The youth who had told police personnel deployed at the bridge that they would return after taking some photographs had dived into the river one after another. Shahi, who has gone missing, had been operating his business in Belori Municipality, Ward No. 1, Baisaki of Kanchanpur. Police have said the search operation had resumed earlier this morning. More than one million families have been facing the brunt as the government has politicized the problems of the landless squatters. The trend of formulating commissions to address the problems of the landless squatters and scrapping them in cases of no political benefits has continued unabated. Now, following the change in the ruling coalition, the National Land Commission formed two and a half years ago has been scrapped. The government has also begun preparations to form a new commission. But there is no clear basis for the new commission to address the problems. Providing land to the landless is a technical issue and can be addressed by those with expertise in this regard. Doing so will not require forming and scrapping commissions with changes in the government. However, the government leadership has been prioritizing recruitment of the carers and creating vote banks instead of addressing the problems of the landless squatters. The National Land Commission formed two and a half years ago during the government led by Pushakamal Dahal for addressing problems of the landless squatters has been scrapped before completing its responsibility and expiry of its term. The government has already formed 16 commissions to address the problems of landless in the past 33 years. The 16th commission has also been scrapped while the government is making preparations to form the 17th commission. Despite the formation of these many commissions, problems of the landless squatters have remained intact. The government does not even have data on the number of landless citizens. Of the 16 commissions, data show that seven of them had provided land to 160,000 landless squatters. However, even those land have been disputed. Meanwhile, other commissions failed to fulfill their responsibilities and were not provided adequate time to perform. Billions of rupees have been spent by the 16 commissions in the span of 33 years. The commission formed four years ago had collected data of 1,180,761, while the recent commission has the data of 1,038,159 families. But with the scrapping of the commission, the data is at the risk of being unused. With billions being spent in decades, problems of the landless remaining the same is a reflection of how the government leadership has politicized the issue to recruit its cadres and create its vote banks. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion.
Public Pulse. The question is why have issues of the land list that should have been addressed with inputs from experts been politicized? Your options are A to create a vote bank, B to employ carers, and C complicated issue. The voting is on, type NAWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. The federal parliament has failed to operate because of the clash between the government and the opposition. However, neither the government nor the opposition have paid any interest towards the parliamentary proceedings. Alleging involvement of Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Home Affairs Ravi Lamichani in the fraud of cooperatives, main opposition Nepali Congress has been demanding his resignation. The opposition also blocked Home Minister Lamichani from presenting the bill related to political parties at the parliament. However, dialogue has not been held between the government and the opposition regarding the issues being raised by Nepali Congress and possible additional obstructions. With both sides firm in their respective stances, the parliament is likely to face the direct impact. Avoiding the parliamentary obstructions, Speaker of the House of Representatives Devraj Khimere is outside of the country. Main opposition Nepali Congress has been warning of obstructing the House of Representatives, the meeting of which has been postponed for 10 days because of the absence of the Speaker. But the government and the opposition do not seem serious regarding the parliamentary proceedings. The government has remained completely indifferent as it has not initiated any dialogue with the opposition to resume the parliamentary proceedings. Opposition Nepali Congress has been obstructing the House with demand of the formation of a parliamentary committee to investigate Minister for Home Affairs Ravi Lamichani. Nepali Congress has been warning of stronger protests if the government does not reach a decision by the next meeting. A conducive environment for the meeting slated for 31st of March should have been created. But the parties have not initiated efforts to hold talks regarding the matter. Change in the ruling coalition has also been reflected in the stance of the parties because of which an environment for talks on certain issues have remained elusive. Despite the ongoing session being the session for formulation of laws, topics related to coalition and political equations have found more priority. Because of this, important bills related to implementation of federalism and transitional justice have remained stranded. While agreement was said to have reached on most topics of bills related to transitional justice, it is now at risk because of the change in political equation. The winter session of the parliament is likely to run for only around one more month. The government does not have a clear plan on endorsing important bills and there is no environment for talks between the parties. It is evident that despite the claims of the parties, they are indifferent towards public issues and prioritize power and political equations. Different kinds of talks are being held around the world regarding positives and negatives of artificial intelligence or AI. However, such talks have been limited in Nepal while the government is in a state of dilemma regarding which ministry should monitor the AI technology. Experts have said that Nepal has failed to reap benefits from artificial intelligence in sectors including education, health and information technology. According to AI experts, Nepal can benefit from the opportunities created by AI in several sectors. Many employment opportunities have been created in the sector of information technology, but the government of Nepal has not initiated any effort for its development and appropriate use. Nepali students pursuing information technology are capable, but they have been deprived of even the basic trainings. Artificial intelligence is the capacity of the computers. AI can ease human work several folds by the use of data and information. Computers can learn like human beings, make logics, and communicate with AI technology. With such knowledge, they can formulate plans, create solutions for the problems they are presented with, and make recommendations as well. However, the government of Nepal has been struggling to formulate guidelines for AI. Despite the claim of the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology regarding works initiated to formulate an official stance on AI, progress is yet to be made. While sharing achievements of one year of his term, Prime Minister Pushakamal Dahal has said that progress of the National Pride projects would be monitored through AI. But no progress has been made in this regard. Inadequate budget and absence of skilled human resource have added challenges in the use of technology in government services. A study has shown that 67 billion rupees has been generated in revenue through export of services related to information technology in the period of one year. Nepali nationals have been working in the IT sector while staying in Nepal and serving foreign service seekers, but the government has failed to prioritize this industry. 
Experts are of the opinion that several laws are required to ensure privacy as personal details are likely to be compromised with the abuse of AI. They have also said that the development of AI could lead to reduction in jobs in many sectors. With works related to expansion of capacity of transmission lines yet to be completed and India yet to issue approval, around 400 megawatt electricity is likely to be wasted from the mid of May. India has approved export of 690 megawatt electricity from 16 projects so far, while it has yet to issue approval for Nepal's proposal of export of 90 megawatt electricity of three other projects. The government of India did not approve export of electricity from 456 megawatt capacity Upper Tamakosi Hydro Electricity Project. From the mid of May, native projects are to produce around 3,100 megawatt electricity. But the Nepal Electricity Authority, NEA, has projected the domestic demand to stand at only around 2,000 megawatt. The authority has said that around 400 megawatt electricity is likely to be wasted. It has added that works related to export are facing complications because of failure in completing expansion of capacity of domestic transmission line. Works of Hitodad Halkibar transmission line has also failed to move forward because of problems related to compensation. With capacity enhancement from Dhalkebar to Batlaya also yet to be completed, the NEA has said that problems are to surface in export of around 700 megawatt electricity this year. And now before we wrap up, here's a look into the top stories one more time. Minister for Foreign Affairs Naran Kazi Shrestha, who is in his China visit to hold talks with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi today to talk on topics including implementation of Belt and Road Initiative. Search operation continues to find one person who's gone missing after diving into the Karnali River from Chisavani Bridge. Police to deploy resources at its disposal based on requirement. Resolution passed by UN Security Council means Israel is now under an obligation to stop its military campaign in Gaza for the next 15 days. Israel not to stop the war. Prime Minister Netanyahu cancels meetings in U.S. And Team Nepal to play Ireland World was in the second match of the two-match 2020 series today. Hosts aiming for a whitewash. Visitors look to level the series. That is all for the moment. Our next English bulletin airs at 6 p.m. Thank you for staying with us. Have a beautiful day ahead.